Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. We got a countdown. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Check. We thank God for all that he does. Amen. And as we thank him God for everything and who he is and how he operates, amen, amen. in our lives. And so we want to give him glory amen. and we want to give him honor and we want to give him all the praise. Amen. And so we're, we're, we're just wonderful today. And we want to thank God for who he is. Amen. And so he's moving in a magnificent way in our land today. We trust God and we come and and we enter into the worship service today. Amen. And we come to magnify God's awesome and anointed name. And so we thank God for all those who have been fasting. And we thank God for all those who have been praying. And we thank God for all those who have been true and trusting and faithful unto God. Yes, God. And so we, we ought to ask God to order his steps. Yes, Lord. He's able, he's able, yes, Lord. he's able to do it all for each and every one of us. And we give God the glory. And we give God the honor. And we give God the praise. And so we magnify his name in the land of the living. We worship him in the beauty of a whole And Come, let us magnify the Lord together and exalt his holy name. Let us praise him in the land. Thank God today. The Bible said, let everything that have breath praise the Lord. So we trust in God. We trust in God. We trust in God. We continue to walk with him and talk with him and let him know that he is all. We praise him in the land. God is able to bring us out. God is able to bring us up. And God is able to bring us through. And so we praise his name. We praise his name today. We glorify his name in this hour. This is the time. This is the season. So we thank God for those that have been praying in the past. In the midst of this fasting, we ask in God for empowerment so that we can invest in the lives of others in our community and in, in the country and the world we live in. And then we ask in God to action in service. We've been fasting and praying 21 days, asking God, amen, to bless us and give us strength so that we can have strength so that we can operate in action and serve him in a beauty of holiness. We are we trusting that he will do it for each and every one of us. And then we ask God to give us strength in the midst of a pandemic to promote unity in the community. Amen. Asking God, God, give us strength to promote unity in our community. And then we ask God, God, please, God, hear our prayer. Clear COVID. Clear COVID in this hour. Clear COVID in this hour. We trust in God that you're able to clean it, clear it. You're able to cleanse it, God. Heal it. Remove it right now in the name of Jesus. God, we bless your name. We love you. Amen. Hallelujah. We want to welcome you into the I'm a part broadcast, our worship service in this hour, where we come to lift up the name of Jesus, where we come to praise God, where we come to give him glory, where we come to give him all the praise. So we thank you for God putting on your heart to tune in our part. And also, if you want to bless and you want to be a part of our own uh, our ministry and partner with us, you can go to www.imapartmbc.com and you will find all your online giving options as well as viewing options. We pray that you'll come on and be a part of our part. Then you can listen to us at 5 o'clock every Sunday, amen, 5 o'clock, amen. If you're out of the listening area, you can go to www. 
WLOK.com and listen, amen, and hear the I'm a part church family celebrate God. And if you're in the local area, you go to 1340 AM and then 105 FM for all of you for your listening options. And so we thank God for this. And so we ask him today for specific prayer for First Lady Parham. Amen. And the Patilla family, amen. They lost their brother upon uh, last night. And so we're going to continue to pray for them. So we're asking all over the country, all over the land, to touch and agree and pray for us. Amen. As uh, us and First Lady, Paul, him, and I'm a part of church family. And so bless the God today. And so we thank you, God, once again for him putting on your heart to tune in the I'm a part. And so at this time, we're going to surrender to the choir and let him take us a little bit higher in the Lord. God bless you and much love.
Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on and give God a hand of praise. Come on and give God a hand of praise. Come on and give God a hand of praise. I've had some good days. I've had some hills to climb. I've had some weary days. And some sleepless nights. But when I look around, then I think things over. All of my good days away my. Bad day, and I, I won't complain. Sometimes the cloud hang low. I can barely see the road. I. I the question love why so much pain but he don't want the best for me he will only weary eyes they cannot see so I'll just say Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I, I won't complain. God has been good to me. Yes, He's been good to me. Better than you and this whole world could ever be. He's been so good to me. He, he wiped all of my tears away. I don't know about you, but I can't complain today. I can't throw in the towel today. I can't give up now. He brought me too far to give up now. I won't. I Father, I ask you. Father, we ask God in the name of Jesus. God, I pray, God, in this hour that you'll give us, God, something fruitful to save your people in their time of need. 
God, I pray, God, that you continue to give us strength. I pray that you continue to give us, give us strength, God, today in this hour. And we pray, God, that you will continue to stand with us, God. I pray, God, that you will speak, God, in the midst of this hour. God, I pray that you quiet my spirit. I pray, God, that you will just give me strength, God. I can stand and, and, and proclaim your holy and divine and anointed word. And God, I realize that I can't do it without you. God, I, I realize, God, I'm not worthy. But thank you, God, for looking past all of my faults and failures and still supplying my every need. God, I trust you in this hour. God, I trust you in this time. And I pray, God, in the midst of this message, God, that you'll speak to me, speak through me, and speak for me, God. And God, I pray that you'll continue to give strength, God, in the midst of it all, God. Continue to give direction, God, and continue, God, to let your power be felt, God, in this time of need. And God, I pray that you'll minister to our spirits, God. I pray, God, in this hour that you'll give us preaching power. Sometimes, God, tired and weary. But God, I know that you'll give strength. When I'm weak, that's when you're strong. So, God, I pray, God, as part of him steps out the way, God, that, that you'll step into it, God, and, and that you'll minister, God, that need to be said, God, speak the words, God. I pray that your spirit, God, will, will resonate, God, and take over, God, and, and order the controls, God, and maneuver us, God, on this trip that we're about to take, God. Take us where you want us to go in the mighty name of Jesus. And, God, we realize that we can't do this without you. We need you on this journey. We love you, God. We honor you, God. Because God preach to us. Preach through us and preach for us. We ask it, God. We plead for it right now in the name of Jesus. I pray that the atmosphere has been set, God, and, and that we're sowing into good ground. We ask it this in Jesus' name. God, we trust you, God. And so, if part him decreases, I pray that you increase. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. All my strength my divine redeemer in the mighty name of Jesus in Jesus mighty name we pray amen amen and amen again we thank God today and so we're going to 2 Kings 5 and 14 2 Kings 5 14, 2 Kings 5 and 14, 2 Kings 5 and 14, and when you have it, say thank you Jesus. Then Come on, deacons, y'all stand with me. Then went he down and dipped himself seven times in Jordan, according to the saying of the man of God. And his flesh came again like unto the flesh of a little child and he was clean. Let us read it again for the hearers and believers in God's house hold of faith. Then went he down and dipped himself seven times in Jordan according to the saying of the man of God. And his flesh came again like unto the flesh of a little child. And he was clean. And I like to use for a thought of God be willing, dipping for a change. Dipping for a change. Dipping for a change. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm dipping for a change. 
And how many understand and believe your life can be changed when you follow godly instruction? We have a problem here in our text. The problem is, is Naaman is dealing with a leprosy and is eating away at his life. And how many understand that all of us got some things that we'll be real that are eating away at our life. We can't be all that God has called us to be. We can't be whole. We can't be everything that we desire to be for the kingdom of God because we have some issues. We have some troubles. We have some problems that are eating away at our life. But what is the solution, Pastor Parham? The solution is hear and heed. We got to learn how to hear the voice of God speaking into our life. And then we got to learn how to heed toward doing what he has instructed us to do. And as we continue to plunge, venture into the text, I won't be long this morning, we understand that we see a leader with issues. We see a leader who has issues. Naaman, who is a captain of the whole of Assyria, he's a master, he's honorable, but something about him, he has some issues in his life. He has leprosy. Naaman, he is a leper. And I want to know about you. Let me pause right here and talk to my leader. And how many understand all of us in here, no matter who you are, no matter how good it may seem, whether you be here or whether you are out there, all of us dealing with some issues. Every leader got something that they're dealing with in their life. They wish they could change. And sometimes we as leaders, we can hide our issues. There's some times that you can hide your issues and there's some times that things don't, you don't want everybody to know your business and sometimes you can cover up the things that you're going through in your life. But in the midst of it all, we got to understand as leaders, we have issues and there's a lot of people that are leading and, and, and going through some things in their life, but yet standing tall for God. And I'm understanding, yes, I go through some things, but I'm standing tall with God. Yes, I have some issues, but I thank God that he's still using me. Is there anybody glad today God saw all past all and your faults and failures and still supplying your every need. Thank God today that he's using you in spite of. No matter how saved you may think you are, all of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. All of us in here need a savior. Is there anybody understand that all of us in here need a savior in, the, in our lives today? So we're leading with issues. He's a leader with some issues. But what happens when your issues are exposed? What happened when your issues become exposed? And so now he's a leader. He's a captain. He's a good man. He's a, he's a man that is moving through life. He's a man that is conquering for the place that he's serving him. But yet he has some issues and his issues become exposed because it's showing up. And everybody understands that when things start showing up in your life, that's when people want to discredit you. And so he has a servant that was captured. Now in Israel, and he brought her back to Syria, and she said, I would to God that he would go and see the prophet. I understand that there's some issues that I have in my life, and all of us understand that we got to get closer to God if we want to get involved. And so he's a leader with some issues and he has a leprosy and everything in his life being exposed. And I understand that when I look up on leprosy, I understand that that's a hideous disease. It'll eat away at your flesh. It will cause things to rot off in your life. It'll cause you to end up ultimately dying from it. And I understand that some people in the world today are dying from their issues. And so he's a leader with issues. Naaman is a leper. He's victorious on the battlefield, but in his personal life, behind closed doors, when he takes his clothes off, he looks in the mirror, he reminded, there's something on my life that is covering me and about to take me out. And I don't know if you've ever been there, I don't know if you ever had some things in your life that you wish you could change. But how many know that you can't change yourself? Only body that can change you is God. And so he's a leader who has issues. Now we look through the text. He's living with leprosy. He's going through day-to-day -day life. He, he's trying to be on his job. He's trying to do the best he can. Uh, Y'all go help me. Have you ever tried to do your best you can on your job and in your church and in your community, but yet you're dealing with some stuff in your life that is hindering you? And sometimes you look in your own mirror and you don't like what you see. Y'all go help me here. 
And so he, he understands that I got a problem, but I thank God today. Anyone understand that you got a problem, but you know a God who can solve them. And so he lived with leprosy. What are you living with that you need God to change in your life? So he's living. He's, he's moving. He's operating. He's going through life with this problem that he can't get rid of. But I thank God, the text letter, not only he's a leader with issues, but he, he's living with leprosy. But also, but I thank God today, he lends his ear. And that means you got to be willing to hear what God is saying. You got to be willing what God is speaking to your life. Because he has a, a ear to lend, because he's willing to hear, and to he, he takes his place. He says, I'm going to see a man. Anybody understand that Jesus is that man for us today? And all you got to do is take all of your problems and all your cares and all of your struggles to Jesus. How many know he'll make it all right? Is there anybody trusting God? He can make it all right in your life today. That he's the one that can change it. He, he's the one that can turn around. You know with the boo boy, y'all are going to help me here, and trying to get a chain. You know with the Nelly and trying to get a chain. You know with the Sally and Sue and trying to get a change. But can't nobody do you like Jesus. Is anybody trusting that Jesus is the one that can bring about a magnificent change in your life? Look at somebody and say, I'm dipping for a change. So he lends his ear so that he can get direction for his life. And how many understand that when you follow God's direction, you always get some correction? He listened, he listened to what has been spoken in his household. And so he goes and makes a trip and he gets it. He wants to see. The man of God to turn, to turn around his life. But when he gets there, let me hear you my text. When he gets there, he learns a lesson. He learns a lesson. All of us got to learn some lessons in our life. All of us got to go through some things in your life in order for God to teach you what, you, what he needs you to move and how he needs you to go and what he needs you to know. And so he has a lesson that he's been taught in his life. He learns his lesson. What, what lesson? He goes and says, tell the man of God to come out. And tell him to come out. Tell him to come here. Tell Elijah to come to me. Come, I'm, I'm coming to him. Come out. Elijah said, no. He sends a messenger out and said, tell him to go wash. Go wash. Go take a dip for your chain. And he gets upset and he, he gets mad. And how many understand when we sometimes we think God ain't doing it the way we want it to be done, we get mad. And how many of, uh, many of us in here have walked away with attitude because you done pray for what, what you want in life and God turn around and give you something, y'all go help me here, that it didn't look like what you prayed for. He learned a lesson. God doesn't have to put on a performance to do a phenomenon. He said, surely, I thought, I thought he would come out here and, and he called on it. And I thanked back to God and make likeness for all of that stuff. I thought he would put on a show. How many know that God don't have to put on a show for him to show up? And how many of you need God to show up in your life and show up in your circumstance and show up in your situation? God will do it. God will use the practical, y'all go help me here, to do the phenomenal in your life. And so you got to learn the lesson. It may not come the way you want it to come, but he's still an on-time God. Is there anybody trusting that God is still on time in your life? He's still able to make a way out of no way in your situation. Is there anybody believing and trusting, leaning and depending on the law? We got to learn the lesson that God is trying to teach us in our life. He said, God, if I hear you, God, let me hear your voice. Is anybody believing and desire to hear the voice of God? He said, I do not see no my voice, and a stranger they will not follow. And when you're leaning and depending and you're learning and you're trusting in God, God will be your bridge over troubled waters. And anybody try the man and know that the man is all right in your life. And many times, many things, that many troubles that I've been myself into is because I didn't listen. But thank you, God, today that we, that we are men and women of God, that when God speaks in our whole, into our mind, we can open up our heart and learn the lesson that God is trying to teach us. And so what did he do? He lived, he received a lesson over his situation. 
then as we look not only we understand that he's a leader with issues not only understand we, he's living with leprosy not only we understand that he lends a ear for his healing but also he learns his lesson but then also he lowers in submission he gets to the point and so he walks away he's mad I don't know what he thought who, who he think I am he don't know who I am he should have came out here did something extraordinary. Made me feel the spirit move. I want him to make me jump over a pew. I want him to make me jump high and touch the sky. I want him to make me move and make me shout. Got to go help me here. I want him to do something phenomenal so I know that he's there. But he sends him and tells him to go. Deal. Go in and wash the man's feet. And he said, don't even know where I come from. Or the place I come from. Why can't I go and wash in those rivers? Isn't there better than the rivers that he talked about? He said, I'm not going there. But his servant, that's why you learn how to listen. The servant said, look here, if he had told you to do something crazy, you'd have done it. Why can't you do this one simple thing? Is there anybody trusting God for the simple things over your life? And so he trusts him for the simple things. And so he lowers in submission. He's looking for a cure. But yet, he's got to be cleansed. <laughs> We're looking for God to solve our outer problems. If you heal my body, God, I'll serve you better. If you just get me out of this financial dilemma, I'll serve you better. If you get me a better job, many of us caught up on the physical things, but God wants to cleanse us on the inside. How many understand that God wants to work on your heart? He wants to cleanse your heart. He, he wants to do something, a turnaround, a change inside of you that'll show up on the outside of you. Is there anybody trusting God, not just for your care, but for your cleansing? Flesh and blood will not inherit the kingdom of God. Is there anybody understand that your life has to be changed? The problem, uh, the problem is just like all of us here. Uh, we got the same name and issues. Uh, name was walked and walked away. And behold, he said one thing in the text is right there. Uh, it's right there in the text around verse 11. He says, I thought. Verse 11, he says, I thought. <laughs> and many of us done messed up because I thought. And how many understand that God's ways are not our ways and his thoughts are not our thoughts. And I thought will mess you up every time. You got to say, God, not my will, but thou will be done. Y'all go help me here. Is there anybody understand that your thoughts don't match up to God's ways? And we got to turn around and let go and let God have his way in our life if we ever going to be changed for the better. Is there anybody want God to change you for the better? There's a danger in the our thought process. Lord, I'm trusting you for my breakthrough. Our thought. It's in the text. I want to give you three points of praise. And don't look at somebody and say, I thought ain't going to get it. You got to trust in God's words. You got to trust in God's direction. You got to trust in God's leadership. You got to trust in God's healing. You got to trust in God's plan over your life. Start asking God, God, what do you need me to do? <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm going to hurry up. I'm going to hurry up. I put points of praying. I'm through. I know, I know we just got off of fasting, and most of us hungry. We ready to go get, get that 12 o'clock lunch. Um, and, and, and so, 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 number one, point number one. Uh, there's help for the humble. I need you to know before you leave here today to get your problem solved, you got to understand if you're going to dip for a change, if you're dipping for a change, you got to realize and believe there's help for the humble. How many know that when you humble yourself before the Lord, he will lift you back up again? Is there anybody know that God will give you a lifter in your spirit? You can't be walking around. Y'all help me help me. Sometimes we'll get so saved that we walk up and we walk up and stuck up.
came to speak to you. I talked to one lady the other day. I said, I'm going to pray for you. He said, I'll pray for myself. I said, but be blessed. He said, God is already blessing me. Sometimes we get saved and then get stuck up. But how many understand the Bible can understand it teaches us that if we humble ourselves, if we be meek, God will lift us up. God will pull us up where no man can take us down again. Is that understand that you got to be humble if you're going to get help from God? And Naaman had to learn the lesson. I got to be humble. My houses ain't going to get it for me. My bank account won't get it. My car won't get it. The money in my pocket won't get it. How many understand you can't buy salvation? The only way you can receive the power of God over your life is you got to love him and trust him. So, look at number one. You got to understand that that's help for the humble. And then Naaman understands. He learns that too, there's healing for the hurting. And there's healing for the hurting. The problem is many times, I found out my brothers and sisters, you want to help a whole lot of folks. But if they're hurting, y'all to go help me here. You really, it's hard to help them. It's because hurting people hurt people. I found out my brothers on this earth that hurting people hurt people. You ever tried to help somebody? So Naaman, he's, he's getting instruction how to get his healing and how to get his breakthrough because they weren't coming like he wanted. He's hurting. And the only thing that can change something that is hurting is prayer and power of God in their life. And so he's hurting. But I thank God that he came to his sister you know, and humbled himself and said, God, I'm hurting, but I want my healing. Is there anybody here hurting, but you want your healing from God? Is there anybody trusting that he is a healer? And then number three, we find there's hope for the hopeless. <laughs> there's hope for the hopeless. Is there anybody trusting God? There's hope over your situation. There's hope in your life. I know it's like hopeless right now. I know what you're going through may look like it's all over and said and done. Sometimes you feel like throwing in the towel. But I come to tell you, my brothers and sisters, if you continue to trust in the Lord, the God that we serve, then you understand that there's hope in the midst of it all. He'll bring hope in helpless situation. Leprosy at that time was a death sentence. Pandemic is a death sentence. Oh, y'all go help me here. That's how many, that's how they pushing it. That's how they be claiming it. But how many understand that no matter in the midst of a pandemic, we still got hope. Is there anybody still hoping and trusting in God that God will be there for you? That God will bring you out without a shadow of a doubt? Is there anybody willing to dip for your change? Then, so I look at my feature word. My feature word is dip. D is for deliverance. Is there anybody here believing that God can deliver you from all your issues? Is there anybody here trusting God? Is there anybody here knowing that God, he is able is there anybody believing for deliverance? And so, I don't know about you, but I don't mind dipping for my change. Is there anybody here don't mind dipping today for your change in Jesus' name? Is there anybody know that God is still a deliverer? That he's there what no what man can do. God is able to do it. What's impossible with man is always possible with God. So when I look at the word, dip. I see that there is, there is an I. Well, look at the word, dip, I see the I means he went in to immerse. And how many understand that you got to go down and get down for the Lord? And what do you mean, part of him? That means you got to dive deep into the things of God. Is there anybody in here willing to dive deep in your prayer life to God?
Is there anybody in here willing to die deep in your reading for your Lord and your maker? Is there anybody trusting God for your breakthrough? Look at somebody and say, dip with me, baby. Is there anybody in here willing to dip for Jesus? Look at somebody and say, I'm going uh, to take uh, another dip in the name uh, of the Lord. So a little word dip. I see there is, there is a pee. The pee lets me know that when you go down in this water, that you can dip for the promises of God. Is there anybody trusting the word of God that he's spoken over your life? If God said it, uh, if that settled it, uh, is there anybody believing? Uh, if God, uh, if he said it, uh, if that settled it, uh, is there anybody trusting God? Uh, if you're trusting God in here uh, to take another dip uh, and to change your life, uh, say it. Uh, I'm dipping again. Uh, I'm taking uh, another dip. Uh, maybe old Naaman, uh, uh, he went down uh, in the water. Order. He said, one for the Father. Look at somebody and take another dip. Maybe he said, two for the Son. I'm taking another dip. Maybe he said, three for the Holy Ghost. I'm taking another dip. Four, because the victory is one. I'm taking uh, another deal uh, Five uh, Keeping uh, Grace alive uh, Is there anybody uh, Thanking God uh, For his uh, amazing grace uh, Take um, uh, another deal uh, Then he went down the six time uh, And he said uh, I'm dipping uh, Because I believe uh, Number six uh, It ain't nothing uh, That my God uh, can't fix is there anyone in here willing to dip for the Lord say yeah say yeah maybe the sixth time he didn't work but he got down in the water a seventh time how many know that you gotta keep going for the Lord on the seventh time he dipped again how many know that seven is the number for perfection. How many thanking God today that he perfected things in your life? Say yeah! Say yeah! Dip again! Dip again! Dip again! I'm dipping for my change. Maybe after he dipped, he looked at his hands. Is there anybody thanking God? He looked at his hands. And his hand uh, look new. Uh, he looked at his feet, uh, and his feet uh, look new to uh, my life. Uh, you know anybody thanking God uh, that your life uh, has been changed? Uh, look at somebody uh, and say, "Take him uh, another deal. Uh, you can't uh, make me doubt him. Uh, I know uh, too much about him. Uh, if you got the Lord, uh, say." Uh, if you trust in God, say yeah, say yeah, say yeah, he's able, won't he make it all right, I say won't he make it all right, is there anybody trying to loud, I know he will make it all right, say yeah, say yeah, it's all right now, you can give again, name it, God has changed. And just like all of us, if we dip on his word, if we immerse ourselves in his word, we'll get the change that we're looking for. We'll get the change that we are seeking. And how many know that God is a reward of those who digitally seek him? Dipping for a change. Is there anybody dipping for your change? Lord, let me take another dip. I'm dipping again for my change. Because I know God is able to do it for you. 
And he's able to do it for me. He's able to bring you through. Have you tried the man? And you say that the man, he's all right. As the doors of the church are open. As the doors of the church are open. I know I've been changed. Oh, I. the doors of the church are open. No, I've been changed. Oh, I. The door that I told you open. Sign my name. You know why. The door that I told is open. Is there anybody did before a change? You can come on and receive Jesus. You don't have to leave here the same way you came. The door that I told you open. Ah. In a mighty way, in, in Jesus' name. 
So we trust you right now. I pray that you heal the sinner. I pray that you inspire the saint. I pray that you say to the uttermost right now in the name of Jesus. Bless this time upon Missionary Baptist Church. Let it continue to stand for your people. And then, God, I pray, God, in the name of Jesus, that you'll bless our community and all the churches that are gathered here, not only in West Memphis, but all over the country. We ask it, God, that you'll bless. And once again, we ask it, God, that you'll pull down and move and give heal and cure this pandemic, this COVID-19, right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Believe that Jesus in, in his name, God, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. So we put it in your hands and in Jesus' name we pray. In the mighty name of Jesus, we say amen and amen again. Hallelujah. Amen. Give him a hand of praise as we get ready to leave this place and never from his presence. We pray that you have a blessed Thanksgiving, Father, in the name of Jesus. I pray that you touch God and as we leave here, God, give us grace and mercy on this travel. Let our Thanksgiving be blessed with family, God. Pull it together. I pray that you'll, I pray that you'll pull, fill in the gaps, God. Fill in, God, those that are absent in our lives, God. Feel the void, God. Let the ranks close, God, in favor and closeness together as family and friends come. I pray, God, that COVID-19, God, I pray that you'll pull it back, God. And I pray, God, for healing, God, in this Thanksgiving season. We thank you, God. So we give you glory, we give you honor, and we give you all the praise. Thank you, Lord, God. We love you and we honor you. Now, by the grace of God and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide, his forth now and forevermore. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen again.